Hey there, it's Modern Rastro Tech, and today we are continuing our journey exploring graphs in Rust. We will introduce graphs as a data structure, and we will look into how we can represent it in Rust, accounting for ownership and memory management, unique challenges that Rust presents when working with graph data structure. And we will also look at some simple optimization techniques. We can start with mazes again. Last time, when we looked at them, we used coordinates to identify the cells. This time, we will just use letters for simplicity. We will also add one more assumption. We will only allow moves from left to right or from top to bottom cells. Now, if we will draw all the cells and connect them by arrows, only if those cells are connected by a passage we can traverse, we will see our first graph. A graph consists of two parts, a collection of vertices and a collection of arrows connecting them. Those arrows are often called edges or arcs, and vertices are sometimes called nodes. An important thing to note is that actual position of those vertices and arrows is not important, only which arrows connect which nodes in which direction. Thus, there are multiple possible layouts for each graph and sometimes changing the layout allows you to see things better. Take this graph. Here we can easily trace a path from left to right corner when we look at the layout on the right. It is a bit more complicated when you try to do it with the layout on the left, but the graph and the path are the same. Graphs are important because they allow us to represent different things with the same mathematical model so that we can apply same algorithms to different objects. For example, let's build a map of Berlin's U-Bahn, or in other words, metro. It's important to know that in Berlin, when you buy a ticket from some specific station, you typically go in some direction and then you cannot return back. So here, for example, if we start from Franz Neumann Platz and we go to Osler Strasse on U8, we can only go to some specific stations either farther on U8 or change into some other lines, but never going back from Franz Neumann Platz to the station preceding it. We can represent all of that as a graph. And here we are also adding additional attributes to each vertice using those colored lines to represent on which line each station is located. To represent this constraint that we cannot go back when we already chose the direction, the graph that we will be drawing will not contain any loops. This kind of graph is called a cyclic. And since we can also travel from one vertex to another only in one direction, represented as us using arrows instead of lines to connect them, this kind of graph is also called directed. Directed acyclic graphs are very common in computer science and if you used computational frameworks such as Spark, Dusk, or Airflow, you probably encountered them already. In fact, one of the coolest things about graphs is that they can represent computation. We will talk a lot about that in the future. Lots of different things can be represented as graphs. We will look at some of those examples more in detail, but there are way more than we can cover. Everything from relationships between people, to folder structure, to dependencies in software projects, to web links between different pages can be represented as graphs. That's why learning how to represent them in Rust and how to implement different algorithms on them will allow you to do a lot of cool stuff. Without further ado, let's look at some code. We already mentioned that we have collections of vertices and edges, and we of course want to use generics to allow any arbitrary vertices and edges. We also need to support loops and multi-edges, meaning when you have multiple distinct edges between the same nodes. We want our API to be as clean as possible and as easy to use as possible. We will only write safe Rust, and we want to be memory efficient. We define a struct called graph that accepts three generic parameters, VAD, E, and V. VAD is vertex ID, E is edge, and V is vertex. We then have two fields in that struct. We have vertices, which is a hash map from VAD or vertex ID to vertex or V. And we have adjacency, which is a hash map representing our edges. We say the two vertices are adjacent whenever we can go from one of them to the other. Keys are start vertices and values are vectors of all edges coming out from this start vertex to some other vertex and each edge is represented as a tuple of 
and Vertex ID and Edge data. This way, all our requirements are satisfied. If we have multiple edges between several vertices, we only need to repeat the IDs, which are typically memory efficient, so typically it's just a U64 or something like that. That allows us to store our vertices only once, and we essentially reference them by the IDs. It is possible to store multi-edges. We can represent loops, which is specifically hard to represent without using indexing like we are doing here in Rust. But here, since we are placing stuff in hash map and then only repeating the ID, which is typically a copy type, we don't have any problems with ownership. Of course, there are different trade-offs whenever you represent any kind of data structure in any kind of programming language, and especially so in a language that is so close to hardware as Rust is. So I will link some articles with different representations in the description of this video so you can check it out. And now we can look at the API we can provide on top of this struct. First of all, how do we construct an empty graph? This is simple. We just initialize vertices and adjacency with empty hash maps. For adding a new vertex, we define a method called push vertex, which accepts a mutable reference to the graph, a vertex ID and a vertex, and essentially puts this vertex ID and vertex in the vertices hash map as key and value. For adding a new edge, we need to again accept a mutable reference for the graph itself, a vertex ID of the start vertex, a vertex ID of the end vertex, and the edge data. Then we use the amazing entry API that Trust provides to fetch the value for the from the ID or create an empty vector if it does not have any edges associated with it yet. And then we just push a tuple of two or end vertex VID and edge data there. One other API that we provide is push VID. That is only useful if your V is an empty tuple type. This essentially makes our vertices hash map into a hash set. And for many applications, we don't actually want to store or care about vertex data except for the connections between vertices. So this allows us to simplify a lot of things. To make it all a bit more visible, let's look at a couple of examples of using this struct to represent actual graphs. For example, let's look at our maze. And this time we're still following these rules that we can only move from left to right and from top to bottom. And we are only looking at a small square at the top left corner, namely with the vertices or maze cells A, B, D, and E. I'm using Rust object notation here for simplicity. So we are using string literals for our vertex IDs here. And we just put all of them in the vertices hash map, A, E, B, and D in this case. And we are using adjacency to represent edges or corridors in the maze. We are putting an entry there for a corridor between A and B. So the key will be A and the vector, which is the value of this uh, hash map will only contain one item here with B vertex ID and write the direction in which we are moving. In this case, right, is the edge data E. Then for B, we also have another corridor starting from it, which goes to E. And we also put it into our adjacency map. Note that this graph does not associate any data with the vertices. So this push VID method will be very useful for working with that and creating this graph. For an example of a graph which does associate information with its vertices, let's look again at Uban. For each VID, which are represented as string literals here, we can put a vector of lines to which this station belongs as the vertex data V. We can still model it as directed graph, where, for example, O slash trace will have an edge to now and a plus, but not vice versa. But instead, let's try to represent it as an undirected graph. In this case, connecting both of those together. We can see that we need to repeat this entry in our adjacency map. And of course, we can provide a helper to make it simpler. Here we define the helper called push undirected edge, which takes immutable reference to self, one vertex called from, and another vertex called to, but here really they both can be called from or to, and an edge. Then we clone from and to vertex IDs and the edge and push it, and we push the originals as well, but in the reverse direction. Finally, one simple optimization that we can apply is to, instead of using standard libraries hash map, is to use VNV hash map. So-called Fowler no vol hash or VNV hash 
is a hash that is very fast for small integers. So typically what we will use to represent vertex ideas. We can easily use it with adding a dependency on VNV crate and just replacing our hash map with VNV hash map for both vertices and adjacency. In my tests, it speeds up some operations up to two times. Of course, it's easy to define more methods on graphs. Feel free to do so. And as an exercise, you can try to actually write down tests representing the graphs shown here to get accustomed to working with this data structure. So to summarize, today we looked at graphs. We implemented them in Rust, accounting for ownership and memory management. We also looked at a faster hash function that allows us to optimize our implementation while still keeping its API simple to use and consistent. And we also looked at a number of real-world examples of using all that. Next time, we will tie together mazes with graphs, and we will see how we can use graph-related algorithms to generate mazes and to optimize real-world problems, for example, planning road networks and such. Till next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you.